Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jeffrey. Today we're going to go over the types of genetic disorders. And uh, before we get started, you're going to have to need a general understanding of your dominant and recessive inheritance. You can learn that on your own. We're not going to touch on that today. Today we're going to touch on the nuances, okay? So we're going to touch on all of these different things. You guys are probably most interested in haploinsufficiency and dominant negative. I'm going to touch on all of these just so that we can review together and to have a general understanding of all of this. Okay, so allelic heterogeneity is basically where you have multiple alleles affecting a, a certain trait, a certain symptom, a certain phenotype. Okay, so if I have a um, gene that codes for protein X and another gene that codes for protein A and both of them lead to the same phenotype, that's what it means by multiple alleles leading to the same disease. Okay, so what that means is if we look at heart disease here, there's a lot of different contributing factors. I'm just going to touch on very briefly familial hypocholesterol. Anemia. Basically, that's a decrease of your LDL receptors, which me means an increase in serum LDLs, and that's going to lead to the formation of plaques, which is also called atherosclerosis, in your blood vessels, leading to heart disease. Um, and then this is not an example. This is not an example of allelic. Uh, heterogeneity um, basically what I mean by eating too much fat means like you have normal um, LDL receptors um, but um, you have a lot higher than normal fat and cholesterol in your system which also leads to the formation of plaques which leads to your heart disease okay um, um, that was just a side point I wanted to make um, but Pleiotropy is where you have one allele, so that one protein X that we were talking about before leads to multiple manifestations, which are a uh, fancy word of saying symptoms or phenotypes. Examples of that are, uh, it's actually the case with many diseases, but you know, uh, Down syndrome, myotonic dystrophy, Marfan's. If we're just going to look at Marfan's, for example, it's going to lead to your um, a larger chest being developed, longer arms being developed, some um, vision problems as well, and that's all caused by one defective um, protein and allele, okay? Um, and then for gain of function here, we're going to have it split into two different parts. It's going to be a gain of a novel function, which is a new function, or an upregulated normal function. So this is your normal physiological process that is going to be upregulated, which leads to a gain of function, um, which in a lot of cases is bad for you. Um, so two things we're going to talk about here are Huntington's and chondroplasia. Huntington's is basically, everybody has the Huntington's um, allele. Um, basically, uh, what we're looking at here is a triplet. It's going to be CAG and um, basically the length of that CAG um, repeat is going to determine whether or not we develop the Huntington's disease, the phenotype, okay? So maybe for a normal person, they have maybe, you know, relatively speaking, this many repeats, and then for a diseased, for a Huntington's disease patient, you have a lot more repeats, and that's going to lead to your Huntington's disease, and what the Huntington's disease does is it leads to, um, you know, those those cells developing neurons, they're going to actually kill neurons. Uh, and that is not the normal function of these cells, and that is a new function. Now, just because we say it's the gain of a novel function, the gain, um, it, it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, um, increase in uh, in brain area, right? This is going to lead to a a gain of a uh, of a neuron killing. Um, function and that is going to lead to your Huntington's um, disease okay and then if we look at achondroplasia um, achondroplasia is basically where we have these uh, kinases and they they phosphorylate um, certain proteins these proteins lead to the ossification of your bones okay and um, that is a very normal process you know when you're young you you have shorter bones and then as you grow older you're going to have much longer bones and you want to and as those bones stop growing you're going to want to strengthen them with ossification okay so that's going to strengthen your bones but 
Um, for patients with achondroplasia, they have this increased kinase activity when they're young, and that's going to lead to the ossification of their young bones, which means they're going to have a shorter stature, they're going to be shorter, and um, their arms are going to be shorter, things like that, and that's going to be the problems that they're going to have. And that's going to be a upregulated normal function because everybody has those kinases and they function normally. It's just that they function earlier at a much um, larger interval than they would be if they were at the same age without a chondroplasia. Okay? Uh, penetrance is whether or not you show a symptom or phenotype when you have the genotype. So it could be expressed in either high penetrance or low penetrance. High penetrance is if I have the genotype, I'm going to express the phenotype. It, low penetrance is going to be, if I have the genotype, I may express that phenotype, okay? So examples of this would be neurofibromatosis. Neurofibromatosis is um, a defect of uh, NF1 protein, and that's going to lead to certain problems. And an example of one of them would be um, uh, benign tumors, the development of benign tumors, okay? And... Um, but either way, what the point that I'm trying to make here is if you have um, neural, if you have the, it's an autosomal dominant trait, if you have the dominant allele, if you have this, then you're going to 100% express neural fibromatosis, okay? Um, it, and then if you take a look at OI, that is going to be your uh, osteogenesis imperfecta. And osteogenesis imperfecta basically is going to lead to a defect in your collagen. And what happens there is um, you're going to have some brittle bones, okay, because of that defective collagen. Um, but keep them, uh, th this is also an autosomal dominant disease, okay? So your disease phenotype is also going to have a, a dominant allele. But just because I have this genotype doesn't mean I actually express the phenotype. Okay, so just because I have the genotype for osteogenesis imperfecta, it doesn't mean that I, I will 100% show this genotype, okay, as a phenotype. As a phenotype, okay, I, I might not, I, I might actually have the genotype, I might actually have the disease allele, but I'm not actually going to, um, I'm not actually going to develop the disease, okay? Um, for variable expressivity is when you have one genotype and you express that phenotype, but it could be variable levels of expression. So um, an example of that would be literally anything. If we just go back to that familial hypercholesterolemia, um, basically we have that decrease in the LDL receptors again, if we, if we remember. Um, um, in one person, they might have only a small decrease and they might not have that that buildup of um, atherosclerosis or that buildup of these uh, cholesterols um, until maybe they're they're 40 or 50, maybe like a normal person. It's maybe it's only a very uh, it's very low expression of that disease, or it could be a very strong decrease in your LDL receptors, and that can lead to the disease being a lot faster in that other person, which maybe will develop that atherosclerosis at age 30. So um, it all depends on, basically what this means is like everybody is different. Everybody expresses things differently. Now, haploinsufficiency. That's when you display a phenotype due to a decreased production of your normal protein or enzyme. So if we're going to look at um, haploinsufficiency here, or, or no, gosh, I'm sorry, haploinsufficiency for familial hypercholesterolemia, that's going to be, I'm going to draw a graph here. So um, for a person that is healthy, I'm going to say this is going to be the healthy person, okay? And... Um, for that person that does not have hyper, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, they're going to produce this much uh, functional LDL receptor, okay? So that's going to be your normal amount. This is what uh, people who are healthy have, and mm, um, that's going to be their phenotype, okay? Um, for people with hyper, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, remember that's an autosomal dominant trait. So uh, your phenotype is going to look like this, your dominant, Allele actually codes for the non-functional um, 
LDL uh, receptor protein. And then your um, lowercase um, is going to code for your functional, okay? So as you can see, uh, because this is half and half here, um, you're, you're receiving one haplo, like haploid, from uh, your father or mother, and the other haploid from your, uh, fa uh, your other parent. That's the reason why it's called haplo insufficiency as opposed to um, maybe something else, okay? But either way, you're, you're basically producing 50% non-functional and 50% functional, and that's going to look like this on, on a graph, for example, uh, in relation to your healthy. So this is going to be your um, familial uh, hypocholesterolemia, okay? Um, hope that makes sense. And then for your dominant negative, that's when you display a phenotype due to the normal production. So if we look back on this graph, it's going to be a normal production of your enzyme or protein, except that that enzyme or protein is going to be diseased. It's not going to be functional. So if we look back on this graph and we think about familial hypercholesterolemia, in the dominant negative form, it's going to have you know, the same production the absolute same production as the healthy, except that instead of producing functional LDL receptors, these are going to be non-functional and they're going to be the diseased and it doesn't work, okay? So what that means is uh, you have that 100% production of, uh, of a protein, of that similar protein, except that it's going to be non-functional and that's going to lead to your disease, okay? Uh, because remember, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia just basically leads to heart disease more fast because you don't have that functional LDL receptors and that leads to the buildup of plaques. Um, so if we just take a look at haploinsufficiency and dominant negative, basically both of them lead to the same disease. But um, if we look here, this is you know, 100% production uh, of a non-functional protein. So it, basically nothing works here, okay? Um, and then if we're looking at the haploinsufficiency, this is still functional, right? Like I'm still having half functional, um, um, half functional LDL receptors, right? So that means that um, that, that buildup of that cholesterol is going to be more slow in my blood vessels than if it were if I was just, um, if I had the uh, dominant negative version of familial hypercholesterolemia. So usually what we refer to as dominant negative is that it's a uh, more rapid onset and more severe. Okay, then your haploinsufficiency because your haploinsufficiency is still producing normal protein, whereas your dominant negative is producing that disease. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope that you guys learned something from this video. I hope it's been helpful. And if you liked the video, like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't.